Yes, it's Pete and Gladys, starring Harry Morgan and Cara Williams. I see. You are. Well, then you'll be able to make it for dinner. Good. Good. We'll be expecting you tomorrow night. Expecting who? Oh, yes. I've told Gladys all about you and your wife. Who and whose wife? And she's dying to meet you both. <laughs> meet who both? Tomorrow night at 7. Well, goodbye, Mr. Caldwell. I think that was Mr. Caldwell. He and Mrs. Caldwell are coming to dinner tomorrow night. Oh, that's wonderful. I've been dying to meet the Caldwells. Who are they? Who are they? Caldwell controls one of the biggest insurance firms in the city. And he has his eye on me for a vice presidency. A oh, vice presidency? Oh, Pete! That's more than I'll ever get from Mr. Slocum. I'm sure Caldwell is going to offer me the job tomorrow night. Tomorrow night? Here? In our house? That's wonderful. Gladys, they like me. It's important that they like you as well. It's that kind of a firm. Well, how will I act, Pete? What will they expect of me? Oh, honey, just relax. I imagine they'll expect you to be charming. Charming. <laughs> well, hello, Mrs. Caldwell. How beautifully marvelous of you to come. Oh, what a chic hat. And what an exquisite coat. And what a gorgeous dress. And where on earth did you get those marvelous shoes? <laughs> Don't take inventory. Just be charming. More important, Mr. Caldwell fancies himself as a storyteller. Be sure and laugh at his punchlines. Oh, 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 I think we'd be safer if you just smile. The main thing is to come up with one of those great dinners you make. Pete, why don't I make beef stroganoff? Wonderful. That really ought to clinch the deal. <laughs> well, have a good day, Vice President. I will, honey. Thanks. Oh, the mail. Let's see. For you. For you. For. <laughs> uh, what's that? Uh, what's what? That card. Oh, uh, nothing. Gladys. <laughs> Gladys, I want to see that card. He's real. Did you charge something at the department store without telling me? He has a very suspicious mind. It comes from being married. Gladys, I insist on seeing that card. Okay, if you insist. <laughs> Third notice, Dent. Dent, D-E-N-T. Dentist. <laughs> Gladys, this is from Dr. Lester, my new dentist. I made an appointment for you, and this is the third time he sent you a card to come in and have your teeth checked. Tell you what, I'll send him a card. I'm fine. <laughs> this fear you have of dentists is absolutely childish. I can't help it, Pete. The thought of a dentist just paralyzes me. First, he sits in his chair. Then he sticks a suction hose in your mouth. Then he clamps your tongue down. Then he fills your mouth full of cotton. You are going to see Dr. Lester. And this morning. Pete, no. Yes. And I'm going to call him later to make sure you've been there. So don't try to pull anything. I won't if he won't. <laughs> lady what makes you think I'm afraid I've been going to the dentist all my life and I can tell the ones that are gonna chicken out well I I will admit I am a little nervous you're being scared it's probably a hangover from when you were a kid you think so sure have you ever seen dr. Lester's high-speed drill N -n no 45,000 revolutions per minute Cuts through your tooth like butter. Butter? Yeah. You don't have to be afraid of a dentist. How 
come I always have to reassure the people of your generation? So <laughs> on your imagination. My imagination? Really? Sure. They have the high-speed drills, the electric hammer, and all sorts of sedatives in case there's any pain. Going to the dentist is a cinch. Well, you make me feel much better. If I can reassure my father, I can do it for anyone. He's a real coward. Right, Mom? <laughs> Don't worry. You'll be fine. You're next, Tommy. Yes, ma'am. I'm going in there to have my tooth drub and an inlay hammered in. And you won't hear a peep out of me. See ya. <laughs> That's a nice boy you have there. I feel better just talking to him. Thanks, Nancy. Oh, I got the shivers when they pounded that little kid. Was in laying. Sounded like they were pounding him right through the. Oh boy, Gladys, this is the worst case of deadest jitters I've ever seen. I can't go back there, Nancy. I just can't. Well, you don't have to go, but be sure and tell Pete that you did. I can't do that. He's calling the dentist to check up. Oh, Nancy, am I just being childish? Is everybody like this about the dentist? Well, I wouldn't know. I've only been to the dentist once, and he told me I had the most perfect teeth he'd ever seen. Oh, really? Uh-huh. Perfect? Absolutely perfect. I never had a cavity in my life. <laughs> it's a shame to let a perfect set of teeth like that go to waste. When they could be helping a friend. Uh, Suppose a friend named Nancy went to Dr. Lester's office and said she was Gladys Porter. Now, Dr. Lester has never seen Gladys Porter. And suppose Dr. Lester took an x-ray of this friend Nancy's teeth, thinking it was Gladys Porter. And then when Mr. Porter called to check up on Mrs. Porter, Dr. Lester would tell Mr. Porter that Mrs. Porter had perfect teeth. <laughs> Suppose this friend really did that. What do you think, huh? I think you should find another friend named Nancy. <laughs> it's just a little favor. All I want to do is borrow your mouth for a little while, that's all. <laughs> Gladys, I get into enough trouble using my mouth. I don't need your help. <laughs> what are friends for? <laughs> to borrow a cup of sugar from, and that is all. <laughs> all right. Suppose Nancy's friend Gladys tells Nancy's husband that his good Meerschaum pipes weren't stolen after all that his wife Nancy gave them away because she couldn't stand the smell of white tobacco in the house. Suppose that, huh? Congratulations, friend. You just got yourself a sit-in at the dinner. Hiya, honey. Oh, hello, dear. Well, I'm proud of you. I checked with Dr. Lester and he said you came in late this afternoon. Now, that wasn't so terrible, was it? No. No, uh, actually, it was the easiest time I ever spent at the dentist. I knew you'd like Dr. Lester. Hello. Oh, hello, Dr. Lester. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, I see. All right. Thanks for calling. That was Dr. Lester. He just looked over your x-rays. I have perfect teeth, haven't I? Yes, except for the three that have cavities and the one that needs pulling. <laughs> I'm trying.
trying to tell you. Nancy came here in my place. Those are her x-rays. Gladys, I'm tired of hearing that ridiculous story of yours. Well, at least you could have called Nancy to check up to see if I was telling the truth. Well, she'd have to lie for you. You know she gave away George's Meerschaum pipes and told George they were stolen. Who <laughs> told you? George. <laughs> Well, you'll believe me when Dr. Lester doesn't recognize me. That'll prove to you that I told you the truth when I told you I lied when I told you I went to the dentist. Which was a lie. <laughs> oh, water, please. Here. The doctor will see you now. You'll see. Wait. Hello, Dr. Lester. I'm Mrs. Porter. Will you please tell my husband you never saw me before? Well, that's true. See? But I happen to be Dr. Carver. <laughs> Where's Dr. Lester? Well, he left on an emergency. I'm taking his patients this afternoon. Now, if you'll just be seated. Bye. Yes. Please, Mrs. Porter, we have a lot of work to do today. No, not on me. Oh, Mrs. Porter, there's nothing to be afraid of. You don't understand. Those aren't my teeth. That's the whole tooth. I, I mean, truth. Now, everything's going to come out fine. If you just get in the chair. No. No, not the chair. Don't send me to the chair. Oh, Mrs. Porter, I'm a very busy man. I don't have time for this sort of... Help! 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 Gladys, stop this. Mrs. Porter, please. <laughs> Don't rush her. <laughs> Don't rush her. Don't rush her. We're 12 stories up. But, Dr. Carver, we've got to do something. She's alive. Easy, Mr. Porter. Easy. I've had this happen before. Let me hand. Well, what are you going to do? Well, the important thing is to be casual, to act like she's done nothing unusual. But, now, but easy, Mr. Porter. Easy. <laughs> Lovely day, isn't it? Stay away from me. Oh, I'm not after you. I often come here this time of day for a breath of fresh air. <laughs> Lovely view, isn't it? <laughs> We're above the smog here, you know. You're not fooling me. I'm not going back in that office and have you pull a perfectly good tooth. Those aren't my x-rays. Well, I can tell that the moment I check the x-rays against your teeth. You can? Of course. But it's a wee bit difficult to do it out here. <laughs> Come inside, Mrs. Porter. Come inside. You, uh, y you promise you'll just check the x-rays? I promise. <laughs> okay. Come on. Come on. <laughs> oh, Gladys. What a fool thing to do. I'm sorry, Pete. Everything went blank. I couldn't stand the thought of sitting in that chair. Take a couple of these pills, Mrs. Porter. They'll relax you. Now, will you please sit in the chair? The pills will make her drowsy. <laughs> now, Mrs. Porter, just going to put a bib around your neck. Nothing at all. Nothing to be worried about. You're not going to hurt me. Oh, no, no, no. No. I'm just going to look. <laughs> Open. <laughs> Open. <laughs> Open. Sorry. Better give you a couple more pills. <laughs> the wife has very strong molars. <laughs> now, can we try again? Sorry. Open. <sighs> <sighs> Excuse me. It's all right. Yeah. Back cuspid's fine. Lower molar's fine. Upper molar's fine. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> She's perfectly right. These are not her x-rays. Her teeth are in splendid condition. How about that? She told me she sent a friend down to her place, but I didn't believe her. Gladys, I'm sorry. <laughs> Gladys, wake up. Oh, I'm sorry, honey. I didn't mean to fall asleep. Well, we can go home now, dear. Dr. Carver says your teeth are fine. That's good. Gladys, you all right? Uh-huh. It's just the pills. Some people are more sensitive to them than others. Well, we've got some guests coming over tonight. She has to serve dinner. I think they'll wear off by then. Come on, Gladys. We're leaving. <laughs> you don't have to walk to the car. I'll bring the car to the front and come back for you. Now, you sit there and try to come, too. <laughs> Mrs. Porter, you look like you've had a rough time. <laughs> well, in these days, there's absolutely no reason for anyone being in pain. <laughs> take care of that right now. Just take these. Open up. <laughs> Where are they? Tranquilizers. <laughs> Please. I'll get you some coffee. Just, just stay there. Oh, you'll never make it. I better phone the Caldwells. Tell them to change our date to another night. Any night. Gladys. I saw Pete bringing you in. What happened? Gladys? Yes. Oh, you poor darling. I have just the thing for you. This will make you feel better in a jiffy. Oh, God. At a time like this, there is absolutely nothing like a tranquilizer. <laughs> Drink the water, get it down. That's a girl that needs to feel an awful lot better. There. Look, Gladys, I have to go home. I have my dinner on. But you take it easy and rest, okay? Bye. <laughs> Call off the dinner date. The Caldwell's down at the hotel. Gladys, wake up. Yeah. It's lucky you already cooked dinner. I can help you serve it, but you gotta get dressed. Yeah, come on, up and at him, girl. <laughs> I'm wide awake. Now try standing by yourself. It's great. Gladys, you can't fold up now. There he is. Fine, thanks. This is Mrs. Caldwell. How do you How do? I've been looking forward to meeting you. This is my wife, Gladys. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, won't you come in into the living room? You folks just sit down and make yourselves at home. It's certainly nice having you with us. Oh, here, Mr. Caldwell. Let me take your hat. Now, I'll be right with you. Come on, Gladys. You've got to keep moving. I'm more awake now, Pete. You think you can serve the hors d'oeuvres? Uh-huh. <laughs> Gladys will be right back. 
back. She's bringing in the hors d'oeuvres. Oh, excuse me. Would you care for a cigarette, no, Mrs. Caldwell? Mr. Caldwell. No, thank you. Uh, how about a cigar, Mr. Caldwell? No. I was telling Gladys what a wonderful storyteller you are. Do you have any new ones? Well, as a, as a matter of fact, I did tell one at the underwriters' convention last week that had them in stitches. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, the hors d'oeuvres. Must try them. Gladys makes them herself. You have a shot, dear. Oh, sorry, Pete. Just nice wait here. Thank you. President of the United States? I can't remember, says the father. <laughs> Daddy, which was the decisive battle of the Civil War? Well, a, a little later, the boy says, Daddy, what was the first ship in the United States Navy called? I don't know, son, the father replies. <laughs> the, mother, the mother who was sitting there too easily, she said, Johnny, you mustn't interrupt your father while he's reading the paper with all those questions. <laughs> oh, that's all right, my dear. How is Johnny ever going to learn anything if he doesn't ask questions? <laughs> Porter, I think we better be leaving so your wife can get some sleep. But, but... He obviously needs it. But, Mr. Caldwell, it isn't the way it seems, sir. You see, Gladys went to a dentist today and he gave her some tranquilizers. And then we came along as the two biggest tranquilizers of her day. <laughs> oh, no, sir. Mr. Caldwell, what I said is true. Honestly, my wife was very eager to have you. She made an excellent dinner. Please stay, Mrs. Caldwell. It's all ready. I don't think we should burden Mrs. Porter with serving dinner. I quite agree. But it's no trouble at all. Gladys would feel terrible if you left. Simply terrible. Wouldn't you, Gladys? <laughs> Right, sir? Oh, well, thank you very much, Mr. Slocum. Well, I can always use it. Oh, that's very nice of you. Well, I'll see you in the office. Goodbye. <laughs> Slocum thinks I almost went with Caldwell. Wasn't he mad? No, he thinks I turned Caldwell down. He's so grateful I didn't go with Caldwell. He's giving me a very generous bonus. A bonus? Oh, Pete, well, we can do with that. First, we'll get that fur coat you've been promising me. Then I thought that little cocktail ring I showed you in the jewelry store window. Then I thought, how about a nice... Oh, come on, Pete. Stop that. Pete! Hey.